Hey, Plant YouTube, what is the most underrated plant right now? So like if rated is here under, underrated. Oh, you only get to pick one. Let's go. So I think this is actually like a super hard little video to make. But, um, the ones that the one that I have chosen, I actually kind of cheated. I brought two blends over anyways, um, is Kellen Coe. I got the silver spoon and the copper spoon. So this is the Kellen Coe copper spoon. And then this is the Kellen Coe silver spoon. I actually think succulents are really underrated in the plant community, but they are so beautiful um, and so easy to care for. I really like, this is my one of my favorite plants. It is coppery and the leaves, the petals are, I call it petals because it looks like a flower. Kind of velvety, my son's just got home from the playground. Um, and it's velvety, it's got beautiful texture. It's similar to this, the leaves are super matte too. It's so cool and it looks like a flower. Um, and they don't, you don't need to water them really. Like maybe I water them once every two to three weeks, sometimes not even. They, they need light, but um, I find that during the winter, a lot of my plants did not do well in like colder temperature indoors. Um, but these guys were fine. They could withstand pretty like cold temperature. Um, yeah, and the succulents in general, there's just like so many varieties and shapes and textures to explore and to love. And they, they really don't ask much from us and gorgeous plants. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you Jimmy again for letting me be on your channel uh, and sharing your space with your, your um, subscribers. Uh, my name is Amy. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube as Wolfgang's Mama. I talk lots about plants and I love Hoyas and Aeroids and uh, yeah. Uh, thank you Jimmy. I'll see you guys around. Bye. What's up everyone? It's Diamond from Planting Plants. And first I would like to thank Jimmy for including me in his video. And I absolutely love that because my account is a little bit smaller but I still have the chance to present myself and my plants for a bigger audience. So thank you, Jimmy, for that. But without further ado, I think it's just time to share you my most underrated plant, well, at least in my opinion. I think that there are so many beautiful and underrated plants that I absolutely love this idea. I think it's very good to share the more underrated plants in the whole plant world. So my number one most underrated plant is a Philodendron Gouldii, but it is actually reclassified as Thamatopilium spruceana, and I know that it is really a mouthful. I'm just going to show you the plant and after that I will also share some close-ups of this beautiful plant. But here it is. It's actually quite a big plant. As you can see, the leaves, they come out of like a stem, but then it grows baby leaves on the bigger leaf. It's very interesting to see. And I think that this form, you don't see that often. And that is why I think this really is a really underrated plant. I bought this plant a couple of months ago and it is actually staying in my bedroom which is kind of a darker place. It has a north face windowsill, so it doesn't really get a lot of bright light, but still it is producing leaves. So I think it is absolutely a perfect plant, even though you do not have the brightest place available for your plant. Currently I'm growing this plant in a potting soil mix. And to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of potting soil or anything organic. I mostly grow all my plants inorganic in a substrate called the Kuzapan. So in the future I will definitely give this an update. But this is my most underrated plant. The Philodendron Gouldii or reclassified as Thaumatopilum. Thaumatopilum, <laughs> all these weird ass names, but the Thaumatopilum spruceanum. Really a gorgeous and in my opinion a very underrated plant. As I mentioned before, I grow all my plants, well, almost all my plants in inorganic substrates like Lucuza Palm or in Leca. So I'm really a big fan of hydroponics. So if you like that, 
I would definitely ask you to check out my channel because I share a lot of tips about growing inorganic and about growing plants in inorganic substrates like Lecuzapan and Leca. So thank you guys and thank you again Jimmy for giving me the opportunity to share one of my underrated plants with a big audience like yours. Hello all you gorgeous houseplant people, I'm Marina, the Millennial Planter here on YouTube and on Instagram and on my channel I like to talk about the good and the bad side of owning houseplants because we all know it's not that glamorous. <laughs> Today for Jimmy I am sharing one underrated houseplant and <laughs> this was hard because there's just so many to choose from. The plant that I actually choose for this and like probably my top underrated house plant is definitely my mammoth philodendron mexicanum. I really don't see this plant talk too much about. I am not really sure why. They are honestly one of the easiest going philodendron that I have. And as you can see, aside from being a little thirsty, she is like, oh, a beast honestly this is the newest leaf and just look at how beautiful and adorable that is who doesn't love a philodendron with some good lobes you know what i'm saying i truly just love this plant it's just it's constantly growing and who doesn't love a plant that's constantly growing i let her soil get pretty much completely dried out which is why she's a little flimsy right now and she's just in the ambient humidity in my living room and in pretty low light like she doesn't get high light she's not getting no light but definitely like a low light situation and she's just so perfect i mean obviously her leaves have gotten a little bit smaller from the whole low light situation but she's still happy she's still clearly thriving and just is loving life and i don't know what i'm gonna do with her because like just just look at that so pretty so big maybe i'll make a moss pole for her soon definitely check this plant out if you can philodendron mexicanum a plant i suggest to have in your collection because they're so easygoing and who doesn't love an easygoing plant we don't need those finicky plants we don't need that type of energy in our lives so here we go <laughs> anyways thank you so much jimmy for having me on your channel once again and i hope to see all you gorgeous people on my channel in my houseplant community in the comments uh yeah i hope to see you all soon bye hey everyone my name is Nikki and I'm a rare plant owner and enthusiast located in Ontario, Canada. Here to talk about what I believe to be the most underrated plant is. Definitely not her, clearly. So let's go and actually get the real underrated plant that is the star of the show today. One second. The Epiprenum Panatum Variegata. Okay, so hear me out. <laughs> I know that these aren't exactly like necessarily a common house plant but I feel that these are super underrated. Epipremnums are similar care to your everyday pothos. They're easy to maintain and they're really not too fussy. I have a couple here, but I want to include a mature clip so that you can see what these really look like once they get larger. With the variegation craze that's going on right now and more people that are getting into rare plants, I feel like these are going to be going up in cost within North America in the next year or two. That's just my prediction. The care for these are pretty minimal. Medium, indirect, bright light. Uh, let them dry in between watering. They like to dry out thoroughly. I put them in a like medium aeroid mix. It's a little bit chunky, but not too, too chunky. I just has a little bit of extra for the aeration and the humidity just above 40%. I haven't had any issues with crisp in my personal plants. I keep my humidity at my house between like 35 to 50% depending on the weather outside. Um, these ones are imports that came in a couple of months ago. So some of them do have some shipping damage um, and they're still recovering from that, but these as I said, aren't the best specimens, but we'll see. As you can see, they do have a gorgeous white variegation on their leaves. And the leaves do become like quite elongated. They do get the holes in them as well as the fenestrations when they become more mature. 
so so beautiful. As with any variegated plants, if you give it too little light, the green will actually take over and it'll start producing less white variegation. The reason for that is the plant is seeking more chlorophyll or the plant is seeking more light through the chlorophyll in the leaves. So the more light that you give it, the more likely it's going to try and produce more white to offset the bright setting. If you give it less light, it's gonna produce a lot more green, though this is also very much dependent on the variegation in your stem. My stems are highly variegated. As you can see there, they're about half green, half white, which is a very nice mix so that you have the beautiful green for the chlorophyll as well as the white, because she's a showstopper. Now I know that these aren't cheap by any means, but with how much variegation, fenestrations, and the what the mature form looks like, I feel like these are actually really underrated. You don't see them a lot on plant groups, not a lot of people have them, but like when they get the fenestrations, you can kind of see one right there. When they get more mature and get the fenestrations and have like a more mature form, these are absolutely stunning plants. They are they're complete showstoppers. Like absolutely, absolutely stunning. This plant is probably one of my favorite plants, aside from my variegated, um, my variegated Addisonii. I almost, I almost like this one better. You can grow them up poles. You can grow them as like a cascading plant. There's just so many different ways that you can play with her. If you enjoyed my clip today, the information for my channel will be linked below in the description. And I love you all. Thanks. Bye. That's where she goes. That wraps it up for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And, you know, if you vibed with any of the YouTubers that contributed to this episode, definitely check out their channels. Give them your support. And until next time, happy planting.